Welcome to the Sports Tonight Euro 2012 betting zone. We're going to find the value in Euro 2012 for you. And I do feel a little bit like I'm impinging on private grief. I know England went out last night and it's not a happy time. But the great thing about punting is that there's always a way back. There's always a way to feel good about a tournament, whether your team wins or not. So we're going to try and find whatever value is left for you. To do that, I'm delighted to be joined by Nigel Seeley, the betting butler, and Chris Graham. Nigel and Chris, lovely to have you. Right, Nick, how you yeah, really good. Really enjoying the tournament, apart from the l result last night, of course. It's been uh, fabulous, isn't you're it? You're probably still loving it as a Scot. Yeah, no, I, I, would, I, I didn't know a, a discernible difference in my attitude towards England's exit last night. I was, I was a wee bit of it, it was, it was, it was quite sad, actually. Uh, just being, being in London um, and just being amongst the, the crew here and the, the people here, it's been, it's been a great experience. and I, I would hate to see that quelled after last night's elimination. No, I think that the semi-finals are so exciting that people are still going to... It's such great games and yeah. some great teams and I mean my general thought Nigel is the football's just been outstanding. It has been I mean it has been a, probably the everyone expected it to be a terrible tournament as far as the football as far as the stadiums as far as the, the, the countries hosting it but it's been absolutely amazing but mm. as far as I'm, I'm a massive thing the fan I was so disappointed last night and there's a part of me that the tournament died last night and I think there's a part of punters as well I mean there are your professional gamblers out there who like betting on the football and, the, and what we're going to see two absolute belters of the semi-finals, but as soon as England go out of a competition, I'd say about 50% of the betting public sort of say, that's it, we'll roll on to, we'll move on to something so else. So people will be interested to know, how's that reflected in the numbers on, on the books? Does it, does it diminish the amount that you well, have I at think stake what on each I match? think what happens when you get to these kind of stages, there's not many much um, error in the prices, and your 10, 20, 30 pound recreational punter comes out and goes back to betting first goal score or quick score, yeah. your more serious punter comes out to play, you know, mm. your, your big, big punters. So the figures are probably about the same, but the number of people betting will be a lot, lot less. Yeah. And I think, I, I think you know, the guys in the betting shops, I mean, you, you, you do a short poll on the streets now, everyone will be deflating, I think that would be considered the people betting. I mean, and the, the way England played yesterday was just such an inept performance. I, th I, you know, I was looking forward to the game more than any game I've ever looked forward to, mm. it's about 1996, and the way they let everyone down, I mean, just just appalling. And I feel that the British public, who are betting public, probably, um, you know, however great these semi-finals are, I don't think I think the turnover will be massively reduced because England aren't there. Yeah, so. I think it was a huge night last night, especially because it was a Sunday night. I think the viewing figures were over the 20 million mark, which is million, extraordinary. extraordinary. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing stuff. But I think the bookmakers, the industry generally is upset because mm. I think we I think we expected about 15 million to be staked last night, but that was perhaps even got to be doubled or, or another well, five. Well, if England Germany semi final, Thursday night would have been extraordinary. So, mm -hmm. in that respect, it's a real and shame. And it's my birthday Thursday night. Oh, and I was going to have a barbecue oh, plan with all the boys around oh, the now. We've got to watch Italy you against Germany. Still have a barbecue. Oh, it's off. Really? It's off. The barbecue. Oh. Oh. No, Nigel's withdrawn his buns. Um, <laughs> and uh, how are you both getting on in terms of your own punning? Me, um, I started well, uh, fell off the pace. I then came in a late rattle last night, my most successful night punting last night, 0-0 on penalties. So I feel like last night was kind of one of those nights where it just went exactly how you would have assessed it would yeah. have gone. I think like the sort of astute punter probably did all right last night. Yeah, you, I mean, the thing is, I mean, I know, I know you did very well on the under two and a half goal market, you know, and a lot of people would have played that market, but... You know, that price, that market is usually around about five to six, four to five. You've got to take two on for that game. Now, mm. I know in hindsight, you look at, oh, it's never going to be a goal. But if one of them chances goes in in the first two minutes. Oh, the first five minutes is horrible. Yeah, you would have absolutely <laughs> totally like different The most game. stretched attacking but game you, You've had to go very short. I mean, you, yeah. anyone taking two on or two to five, I'm, the shortest I can remember a game to, under two exactly. and a half goals is around about four to nine. Mm. And, and to take yeah. those kind of prices, anyone will tell you, you know, someone like Channing, who's more professional, look at say, you, you can't statistically win by backing those short mm. prices. But on that game, you got it right, you it called it right, right you know, it, it was right. And, but how low could you go under two? How low could you go? Yeah, that was, that was, yeah. You know, that was, that was really yeah. close. And probably, you know, probably I'm taking a little bit of the worst of it there are. over time. But mm. I, it was just that specific game with those teams. Yeah, I mean, you, look, you look at the penalties. I mean, the penalties in that game, the game, what, what price did you take the match to go to penalties on? Uh, 92, I've got 92. 92. I mean, you're looking at other games in a tournament, it's like 16 to 1, 14 <laughs> to 1. So you, you know, you're taking a lot, lot lower under the odds on that particular mm. game to go to penalties. You know, you, everyone's got it Right. So actually, the bookies probably were a little bit. You're saying a little bit unlucky that it actually went to four. I think. I think what happened last night. I mean, just reading through the tweets of some of the PROs in the in, in the bookmaking industries, they kept the draw so short that it put people off. And the patriotic money count, the patriotic pound took time to come, but mm. it took it come of a vengeance last night, and it was a perfect result. And I think sometimes the nil nils and, and of this world are great for more of your shrewder yeah. client, but 
it's true not required night. is probably 5% of your, of, of your database. And if 95% mm -hmm. of Mac is something, it's a perfect result. So, yeah. But it, uh, saying to your point with, with how the tournament's gone, I mean, I haven't had a bet because I would have absolutely done my brains. Yeah. If, you know, I, would have been, I would have been out of the game going into that game last night. I would have sold goals in most of all the games. I would have absolutely done my absolute... It has, it has been weird, hasn't it? It's been more attacking and open than people thought, I think. Let's um, take breath and check out how the tournament is. More on England later on. We're going to talk uh, England's future, a little bit about Hodgson, stuff like that coming later in the show. So do stick with us. But we're going to look at the tournament as it stands right now. After the quarterfinals, as I said, time to take breath and see where we are. Four teams left, of course, as we enter the semis uh, this week. And two outstanding teams, but two live outsiders. So it'd be interesting to see what money they attract. Spain are the favourites just from Germany, uh, Portugal and Italy, the other two teams involved. It's, that's, that's our specific, our sponsors list, but I, actually I, I looked at all the different bookmakers and what the prices are and, and, and the, most fa the most common price is, is joint favouritism. Yeah. Uh, and Germany, in fact, are, are favourites above Spain and, and, and most of us. So Spain favourite is actually the least common. Uh, the three do not, uh, combinations there, so that, that's really interesting. For me, I think Germany should be favourites. Um, I, 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 I really want to get, get Spain here. I backed them not to qualify from their group. I'm determined to get them beat. And I'm, I think it might come. Why? Why do you think that? Because, I, I mean, you're talking about the World Cup winners who barely let the other team have a kick. Yeah, I, well, I just, uh, France was just so disappointed on Saturday night. I really put all my but eggs that's in. That's the French, Chris. You, I, I don't know how you can be disappointed by the French. I love You've France. I love that. the nation. I really do. do I, and I was yeah, so that's, disappointed. That's nice. I was so powder puff they were, yeah, they were on Saturday night. Really poor. Um, I just think this is... Spain are missing David Villa. It's, it's, it's not as good a side as it was in 2010. Um, I, I just think the, the Germans will be, will be too strong for them. But I think Portugal are a big price. I know we'll look at the one draw win later on the semi final. I think Portugal are a, a big price. Well, you're sitting next to Mr. Portugal. Yeah. Your, your dark <laughs> horses from no, day it's one. 1987. 1987, yeah. <laughs> 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 Latin flavour to you. I mean, on the outright market here, I cannot believe Germany aren't favourites. Yeah. I cannot believe it. I think that Germany, they've rested their three best players in the semi-final. Mm. The three best players come back, but they haven't played, so they, they, they have match fit. They played in a canter against the Greeks. They played mm. a team that got 48 hours rest over a team who just played two hours. And the Italians, I don't think, are great shakes. I think they're allowed to play against the English. I think Perlo, we all know what I actually think about Perlo. I don't think he's the greatest player in the world. I think he was allowed to play last night. I think Schweinsteiger will stop him from doing anything he did last night. Ozil will be a playmaker. And, and I think the Spanish task against the Italians is a much, a much easier task than Spain against Portugal. Okay. And I think when they get to the final, if they do get in the final, I think it's a pick and match. So I just can't believe that Germany aren't the favourites of this competition. Interesting analysis of it. Let's uh, just look. You can bet to name the finalists if you want to uh, be specific about who's going to make it there. Spain, Germany, um, as I said uh, last week when talking to Nigel, it's... it's of a major football tournament, it's the clearest case I can remember of two teams that are head and shoulders above the other teams, almost like they're playing in different leagues, really. Um, and uh, yeah, so Spain, Germany is 11 to 10 if you want to name those two. Yeah, I mean, that, that's been the favourite, and that's the one everyone wants to see. But I mean, the Portugal factor, the fact that they've got the best player in the tournament, you know, they, and, and who can, who can get, drag them through. I, I just don't fancy Italy at all to get through against Germany. I think that, I, I, you know, Germany to me, will beat Italy very, very convincingly. It's just a question who gets through that Spain-Portugal game. But everyone wants a Spain-Germany favourite. It's been heavily backed, and it's the favourite because they are the best two teams in the competition. Okay. Let's have a look at player of the tournament. This is how you mention uh, who you think is the best player of the tournament. And uh, you can uh, back Ronaldo as the favourite. Uh, Iniesta, Ozil, <coughs> Pirlo, Schweinsteiger. Uh, no Stevie G, that's weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about this, Chris? Um, well, I, I would on the trends... You, you know, you need know, a player, sort of midfielder, uh, uh, from a team who wins the competition. That's, that's right. I think Samar '96, Karagunis in 2004, Zidane in 2000, Xavi in 2008. Good knowledge. So, yeah, you I've, didn't I've, look I've, at your notes once. That was I've awesome. Done my research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like so it. in that respect, Ronaldo's probably not the best best favourite. But having watched the, his performances so far, they've been absolutely quite inspirational. Uh, certainly the last two games. It's interesting uh, that he's favourite for this though, because obviously Portugal are less likely to win the tournament yeah. and you would think a lot of times the player of the tournament would come from the winners. Well, I, I, think, I think if he gets them to the final, he'll win it. Yeah. Okay. So I think if you think Portugal will qualify, you might want to back Ronaldo. 
because I think it, just that achievement again to the final is purely. I think he makes a key. I know there's other players who contributed, some good players in that side, but I think he's the main. But I think a lot, what Alonso did at the weekend is a great bet. 25 to 1. He scored mm. two goals and won a Grand Prix. So that's quite, <laughs> that's, that's, that's quite impressive, isn't it? 25 to 1. Oh, so he, he would be, he would be my the, the double Alonso stroke never gets, yeah, never gets yeah. old. It's always class. <laughs> what, we're just worth saying about Italy. If you fancy Italy, God help you if you do, but um, it's worth backing Pirlo at a bigger price to win player of the tournament because if Italy win it, Pirlo will definitely win player of the tournament, I would yeah. say. So he's a, big, he's a wee bit bigger price than Italy to win it. So What price is Diamante? I mean, he, he got the winning penalty. He was awesome when he hobbled around at West Ham. I think, sure. he's, I think he's short at two hundred. Does, does, yeah. does he say yeah? The man from Diamante. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I think he's um, he he he'd be a many price, but Pirlo, I mean, I, I can't have him on my mind. I think he, I think Ronaldo, though, just in what he's done in the two games, if he gets to the final, I I, I think the winners. I think Germany are right for favourites. I think Chris might have backed the winner of competition here at four to one. And, and I, I think well, we know, we're both on Spanish style yeah. anti-post, so we need that. But Ronaldo, the, the way he's Shrine, playing at the moment, Spanish style. I think he got every chance. Let's have a look at the Golden Boot winner. I don't even know if they call it the golden boot. The top goal scorer uh, in Euro 2012s. Uh, Gomez is a short price favourite with Ronaldo. And uh, you can understand why. They've both scored well already. And both uh, in the semi-finals. Two horse race for you? Definitely. Or, yeah. I can't believe Torres is 11 to 2. I mean, he's, he's, he's one behind with, with only two games to come. And he's not guaranteed his place in doesn't the like, Doesn't look he, like he's he, in his he's, first he's, choice He's 11, one of the he? worst 11 to 2 shots I've ever mm. seen. I mean, I think it is a two-horse race. I think the thing here, though, is, is crucial. I mean, if, if he goes with Close or he goes with uh, Royce in the game, Germany game, you know, he's very tactically minded. He's got so much uh, guns at his yeah, disposal. Really Get the team news on this, because if you find the team news early, then lump on Ronaldo. But if Gomez plays, he's, he's a serious threat. That's yeah, interesting, I, I isn't it, Chris? Because yeah. this, this won't probably instantly reflect the team sheet. So you might be able well, to well, find Well, a couple of points about this market, Nick. Um, Gomez is a real differentiation in his price. He's 13 to 8 favourites with some lists, and as big as 72 in other lists. So really? perhaps why wow. whether he'll start with closer, I don't know. And another thing as well, someone that's just been on my mind for about 10 days now, and I, I keep meaning to tweet about it, but this is a great platform to talk about. Mario Mandzukic should be out this betting. He's, he's been credited that goal against Ireland, which definitely... He shouldn't have been given that goal. I had the post and then off Gibbons' head and went back yeah. in again. It wasn't going in. If by chance none of the top boys score another goal, he's got to be one to share a goal in the boot, which I think is grossly unfair. Grossly unfair, but it could happen. It could happen, which is which is wrong. And, and as a punt and from a punting perspective as well, it's having an influence on that market as well. So mm. let's hope someone scores a fourth goal and knocks him out. OK, well, I'm uh, pretty confident they will, but we'll find out, of course. We'll keep you with all the developments in that market as we go on. But after the break, we're going to look in depth at the two semi-finals and find the value for you there. Also, more England chat to come, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Euro 2012 betting zone here on Sports Tonight and we are talking Euro 2012 semi-finals. Time to get into the specific matchups. We've been saying two teams head and shoulders above the rest. Well, they're going to have to prove it now. Both of them facing live challengers in the semi-finals. We'll talk Portugal, Spain, first of all. How do you see this one, Nigel? Obviously the Spanish, it's almost become like a bandwagon to say, oh, are they quite as good or are they vulnerable? They're still winning. They're still winning comfortably. They are still winning comfortably. They're playing their style of football. But um, there's something about. I mean, the, I think if, when you play them at a similar time of game, you try and play it. You're asking for trouble. You've got to be more direct. You've got to go at them. You've got to. You've got to be. You've got to go at pace. You've got to go at power. And that's when they're beatable. Uh, I mean, the French didn't didn't turn up. And I think after the first 10, 15 minutes, that they thought, well, we 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 have got no chance here. And the heads went. Well, this Portuguese side, I've I, I got a feeling they, 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 they fancy their chances here. I mean, we've gone about right now, you know, with how strong now at the back, Pepe, I think, has been superb. They've got something about them. They've got a bit of a fight about them. They've got a bit of belief about it. You know, I've backed Portugal all along at the very beginning, but I just got, even if I hadn't, I hadn't backed them, I have a feeling they, they could, I don't know if they can beat them. Over mm. like, but I think it's going to be a long night. Do, I think it's they, not going to be as clear cut as the bookies suggest this. They do give them some problems, don't they, Chris, in terms of matchups? Because with Nani and, and Ronaldo, they've got good counter attacking mm. players, which is yeah. what you need against Spain, isn't it? You do, and we're seeing a lot of negativity about Spain at the moment in terms of the press coverage. I think people are beginning to fall out of love with the style of play. You know, people are saying it's just passing for the sake of passing, almost like art for art's sake. I don't I'm, know, not, I'm not convinced that's true. I think that's almost a media thing where they don't have anything to write about, so they write the people. Well, you should have on Twitter on Saturday night. Cause it was, it was I wouldn't go on Twitter on Saturday night. <laughs> I've got to be honest. <laughs> yeah. but, um, but one thing we have to say, Spain have never conceded a goal in the knockout, champ knockout stages of the tournament for six years. It's it, amazing. It's the sixth anniversary 
on Saturday night, on oh, sorry, on Thursday when the same finals take place, and I, I think it will happen. Tough to concede a, a goal when uh, the other team doesn't have the ball, isn't it? Let's look at the match odds, shall we, for semi-final number one. That's what I'm calling it. I don't know what order they actually are. Uh, Spain and Portugal. Well, these are similar prices. The, the game exactly against France, isn't it? Right? Exactly the same. So, I mean, uh, do you think France were a better side than Portugal? I think Portugal were a better team yeah. than, than the French. And so, I mean, I, 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 I would like to take this Spanish on it. I mean, I, I think we could have another game where it goes all the way. I, I think that the, the, with, the, with the Spanish side, that you know, they, they've, about, they've got these flair players who like to, to play the football. They've got the NES, they play lovely ball. But they've got to now track back and go back for Nani and they've got to back mm. for Ronaldo. And I, and I think the Portuguese got a great chance here. The only trouble with them is they do have a cycle. Spain have a massive big, psychological big brother, advantage thing, over them. Yeah, and, well, and that's the thing. Well, you see, you see that, mate, but um, if, if only, Portugal have lost only two of the last 12 against Spain. Portugal have a great record against Spain in the last 20 years. Yeah, but I mean, it, just as, as a nation, I mean, it's not on the football pitch, it might be different, but there is something like this. When the Spanish come into down, they played in the last World Cup, didn't yeah. they? And, that, and Portugal didn't play that great in that game. Mm. I mean, Spain played really, really well. And, and it, there was something that, that Portugal looked a little bit worried about. Them. But Ronaldo was just. You know, if anyone can turn it on in his career, yeah. and you know, and, and mm. he's doing it against these Spanish people week in and week out. Well, that's yeah, true. In, yeah. in La Liga, so it's not like he's going against someone who hasn't reached like a Premier League defence or Ashley Cole knows his number. He's doing it week in, week out. So I, I think Portugal have a chance. Oh, okay, we've got we've got method of victory here for you to look at, Chris. Uh, while you chat, what sort of game do you think it will be? I think it will be one 0 I think it will be tight, a, a, a tight affair. But for me. The bandwagons of Portugal here, they're a feisty side. There seems to be a growing confidence amongst them. They started, obviously, they started with a defeat against Germany. Um, ever since then, they seem to be improving for me. Uh, I, could see, I think 72 is a very generous price. The prices of both semi finals are almost are absolutely, absolutely identical. And I think Portugal have got a much better chance against Spain than I think they do against Germany. You'd have Germany. to say, this is going back to your point earlier, Nigel, you have to say there must be an error in there somewhere. For those two, for the two semi-finals to be identical yeah. kind of prices, because they're not, they're not like Portugal is surely a tougher matchup than. Well, I mean, Chris is still, I didn't know that stat. I mean, it's, I, I, I always sort of thought that the Spanish had a much better record against them than that. I just, I, and, and Portugal have one player who can just turn it on on mm. one night, and they won't be able to cope with him. The, 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 obviously, that big factor, which we'll come on to, well, we come, I'll leave it to we come on to the other yeah. game. But I mean, uh, Ronaldo is just the key factor here. I mean, and teams have got better and better and better as the competition have got on, and even against Germany. For long parts of that game, they they were the much the better side against yeah. the Germans. They hit the post, they hit the bar, they were the much better side. They Germany got a goal at the right time, nicked it one 0 But for the last 25 minutes, they, Germany were hanging on there. Mm. And I think these Portuguese are, are really got something about them. They got flair, they got whip, they got pace, and they got some fierce tackling. And, well, and they're yeah. defensively, they're, they're they're strong. The yeah. only doubt for me is the goalkeeper, but he's not going to be put under aerial bombardment on his yeah. Spanish side. You That's know exactly true. what you're going to get. You know mm. when the Germans play this. If they play him, I think it might be a, a tough night for the goalie. But the right. goalie is not going to be threatened there. But I, I think the Portuguese have got a fantastic chance in the semis. Seventy-two. Is, I think that's a really big price. I really do. I would sort of expect it to be five to two. Right. Okay. Wow. Uh, a whole point. So uh, a lot of value. We think in Portugal. I disagree a little bit. I think the Spanish will be reasonably comfortable. <laughs> but uh, who am I to say? Let's take out the second semi-final. Germany take on. Italy and Germany, many people's favourites now for Euro 2012. Some dispute, which is fascinating at this late stage, as to favouritism in the tournament as a whole, depending on which book you look at. But Germany do take on Italy. As we briefed you before, uh, the match odds are very similar to the first semi final. Very similar read, identical. <laughs> and we already know how yeah. you feel about that, Nigel. Do you think this is I a do. much easier match? Ah, Germany, Germany. I think Germany win this easy. I really do. I didn't see it. I mean, I know England played poorly, but there was nothing that Italian side that would scare Germany. They'll they be sitting there rubbing their hands. I mean, I think the, the critical thing is that they're not going to sit off them like we sat off them, are they? They're not going to do that. They're going to match look, them in midfield. The they're going to press them high up the pitch. You look how many chances they missed. Look how many chances Balotelli missed. He, missed, he, he, he broke the offside track four or five times. Forget about... Uh, they couldn't score. They didn't score in 90 minutes. They had about eight or nine clear-cut chances. Mm. Cassano, I mean, he, would he get into the English side? Would he get in, up front? I, I don't think he's any great shakes. I think Perlo run the show. I think they're a very, very average team. I think England were a, a disgrace and disaster. To, to, for the tournament, but Italy aren't no great shape. Just because they've beaten it in England side, they've played for two hours. Mm. They, they've, <coughs> they've got players suspended. This isn't until Thursday, though, so I mean, I, that, should, that shouldn't. I, be a do, I think fact, it makes a massive factor. I, I think it's a massive factor. Get fact, your energy though. drinks, have a rest. What's the you, problem? You, uh, you saw how tired England got in that game. Chris Stevie Gerrard going down with cramp and that stuff like that. that this, the, the heat out there is very hot. The, the temperature is, is high even at that time of night. I think the, the 48 hours rest they've had and the fact they've rested their three best players, mm. forward players. 
they have the luxury of six great six forwards that they can just say oh, incredibly them. incredibly bold thing to do that by the German manager very kind of oh. very kind of I mean not not the perhaps biggest risk in the world because they're yeah. playing Greece but still not every you manager would have done it country, it just no, wouldn't happen you wouldn't just ruin it on the bench wouldn't wouldn't happen. Yeah, but it shows you it shows you what, what strength they got in depth they, they, they say it's Absolutely, a risk they bring yeah. a guy who's played 100 caps and scored 50 mm. goals well, our risk would be to rest Wayne Rooney and bring in Andy Carroll or bring on someone yeah. who hasn't, or, or hasn't right. proven Andy Carroll who of course played much better yeah. than Rooney in this yeah, tournament they've got players who sorry they have they've got great depth great depth Germany, like the same price as Spain, I think Germany agree with Nigel. I think a, a much better proposition here. Okay. Uh, although the, st the stats scream Italy. In fact, that apparently Germany have never beaten Italy in a competitive game, which is absolutely extraordinary. It's weird, isn't it? Absolutely extraordinary. Just have the Indian side of it. Let's have a look at the method of victory. What kind of game do you see this being? Do you see the Germans being able to dominate them? Yeah, I, I, I could I could see a, a goal in each half here, maybe maybe two now. I, I can't see it going extra time. Certainly not like the game in two thousand six where. That wonderful semi-final, which was 0-0 in 90 minutes, and then the Italians won 2-0, I think, at the mm. extra time. Um, Germany won 15 in a row now. I mean, they've, they've you know, they've scored in 20. You, you'd have, you have to say that one of the most disappointing things last night was how little we tested the Italian back line, because mm. to me they didn't look great. And I think that against this German attack, which is very di direct, but in a technically, you know, mm. street way, I think they're going to have everything they can handle, you know. I think it's in midfield as well. I mean, Schweinsteiger, Pirlo's going for a test against Schweinsteiger. Just in case you haven't picked up on this, Nigel's not a Pirlo fan. <laughs> no, he's not, I think he's a great player. I think he's a great. I think he's a great player, but he's 33 years old. This, this guy's been around for years. I just think if he if he was that good, he would have been signed up and gone somewhere better. I mean, mm -hmm. two games he's played well. You know, you could give give any player that amount of time against England last night, and he would look a well beaten. And he's not going to get it against. And Germany. he won't get it against Germany because they'll, they'll Schweinsteiger will be on him like a rash, and Ozil will be allowed to play, and then have two. Much strength in depth and, and, and their bench they can call on people who've scored 40 international goals mm. they can call on Podolski who's scored 26 international you know in the high 20s international these, these, they've got a team strength of and depth and unbelievable every department put Murta Saka at the back getting a bit depressed now why can't we be more like them just copy whatever they do for goodness sake <laughs> let's get some efficiency into our proceedings <laughs> unfortunately we're not and we're out but Germany look like they're marching on potentially to a Euro 2012 title but they'll have to get past Italy and, of course, Spain. Uh, we're going to take a little break, but after the break, we're going to be talking more England. We're going to be discussing the future for England, the future for Roy Hodgson, and if there's any value in betting on those things. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back very soon. Welcome back to the Euro 2012 betting zone. We're talking Euro 2012, the semi-finals, and England's exit. Delighted to be joined in the studio by not only Chris and Nigel, but also for this part and the rest of the show by Alan Alger from Blue Square. Alan, great to see you. Yeah, you too, Nick. Yeah, keeping well? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad, thanks. And give me your Euro 2012 review so far. Have you enjoyed it, first of all? Well, we were enjoying it at Blue Square up until last night when, uh, well, up until the quarterfinals, really. We, we, we refunded any team knocked out on penalties. So all that patriotic money, oh, which, wow. to be honest, there wasn't as much of it this time round as, uh, as before, but there was certainly enough of it to miss, seeing as we've given it all back this morning because they got knocked out on penalties, which yeah. was a concession that we were running. And uh, once again at a Euros, uh, I remember it happened in Euro 2000, the odds on favourites all, all came in. So the, the, the obvious treble that everyone was having on the quarterfinals managed to come in before so the England So it was a significant game. amount of money you, you've had to refund? Because that's an amazing promotion, to be fair. Yeah, well, the, the England refund itself is, is, is just under £40,000 that we've given back mm -hmm. on, on the outright market. And, um, I mean, obviously that was a big blow. We've given that back as free bets up to £100. But um, the main thing for us was that we just didn't get a result. We didn't get a result in the quarterfinals, mm. and um, it happened at Euro 2000. I don't know if it casts your minds back, but France managed to beat uh, Spain late on in the final um, in the final game. And that was when Spain weren't actually that good. They were outsiders <laughs> right, for the right. game at about three to one against the World Cup holders, and they were holding them to a draw right to the end. And then France managed to nick a goal, and that 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 uh, made all those accumulators successful for that. And and because the England Italy game was so close on the prices. Um, we just really didn't see much action for, for, for the three sides, but the three favourites beforehand, they were all backed. Yeah, they have an expression in American sport, they say a lot of chalk, 
when the top seeds keep going through. Mm. And that's basically what's happening, isn't it, Nigel? And when there's no upsets, what does that mean for, for the bookies? It means bookies lose money. Yeah. It's pretty and simply. I mean, that's usually a nil-nil nil draw, sad. usually a nil-nil draw, you win the lot, you cop the lot. Mm. But obviously, Blue Square got that offer last night. But I mean, one thing that Alan said there, which is amazing, it shows you how the game's changed in the last 10 years. If England, in the World Cups, eight or nine years ago, 10 years ago, you wouldn't be refunding 40 grand, you know. That's exactly. not, not the bookmaking yeah. business, it's the, the patriotic support. Mm, yeah. It would have been 10 times more. So, than what, so what's happened to yeah. the, pa the patriotic bet then? What, what's the, for happened? me, this is the one thing I'd take away from this tournament. It really is. There's the lack of patriotic money. What's happened? Is, has has the, the gambling public matured? Has it become more sophisticated? Less prone to back in England at silly prices? Uh, for, that is, for me, has been startling. I'm surprised there's not been much more. I think, much I, think you'll find, I think you'll find now that the gamblers, the, 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 if you go and watch people bet on football, the demographic are younger, 25, yeah. sort of 26. People watch your show are probably a younger generation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they have more access and they're more intelligent than you, you can never know. I mean, when I started in the game, there was people there just out, oh, I have 10 grand in England, I'll have 10 grand on Tim Edmund. Mm. And the industry was made up of people who had more money than cents because basically there was, the country was much more, there was people with more money, there was people there were much more affluent, we weren't going for a recession. Now you get people who are much more shrewd and mm -hmm. clever who have the internet. We live in a world with Twitter, we have all the team news, we have all the everything. Yeah. And, and mm. the, the punter nowadays is much, much, much harder to beat oh. and will not back England. To, and he doesn't care if England are playing. Italy and England played Germany in the semi-final they're back Germany. I, I agree with everything you said I think the other thing that's happened this time around is I think this is the first major tournament I can remember where we didn't go into it with the media hyping the fact that we could win it and I think the expectations have finally caught up with reality a little bit. I'm not so sure. I would definitely say in two years' time, when you, put, when you qualify for Brazil, which you will, um, it'll be the same. There'll be a lack of interest um, going off at 16, 18, 20 to 1. Well, I well, think the seven, tightest time. 7 to 1 on to qualify for Brazil 2014, but yeah. 18 to 1. And we've put that up on the site, and that's drifted two points from what it was before. Um, Sixteen out to eighteen to one. So the patriotic um, pound yeah. is basically it's, it's dead. dead. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember when when England played in Brazil. Uh, England played Brazil in that World Cup in, in Japan. England were favourites for the win. We we, we're favourites to beat. Japan. We're favourites to beat Brazil because the money came in for that tournament, and we're favourites to win the World Cup. And every tournament, you England would be ten or twelve to one, and the eve of the tournament, they would be backed off and they would go off at sevens. You, well, wow. Third favourites for the yeah, World every Cup. England, England, the 2010 World Cup was third, third favourites. Yeah, right. Six to one. Yeah. Right. Or 11 to two, 11 to 2 the morning after the draw. Yeah, we talked out, about out, out, out of interest, we've got the World Cup odds. If you yeah. fancy a long range bet, they are uh, there for you. Brazil hosts, of course, at 7 to 2, Argentina at 5 to 1, and then Spain and Germany. England at 18 to 1 on our caption. You're saying they're already drifting from 18. Yeah. Um, they were 16 to 1 prior to uh, prior to that price change this morning, where we've we've rejigged the market. Um, I think one thing there to take out of that is that um, four points shorter than Italy, who who just schooled us, which is quite interesting. Absolutely, absolutely. Price. absolutely. Yeah. The last, the two of the last three World Cups have actually taken place on continents that we we haven't been used to in the past: Asia in 2002, and then uh, 2010 in Africa. But I think if you go back and you extract the European and the South American finals, you can only really win it if you're from that continent. That mm. has been true so far. So that's why you've got Brazil and Argentina at the top there, 7-2 to two and 5-1. to one. Has, has much changed in that time? Okay, Italy won it in 2006 um, on European soil in Germany. But I'm wondering now, the movement of players might just have changed that. So maybe, just maybe, we will see the first ever European winner in South America. But I, I, I mean, agree with everything that's been said so far. Punters are wise enough now to know that England do you, just aren't. Do you think on the, uh, on the talk of your tournament, do you think England were bigger or shorter than 18 to 1? Like, well, I, know, I, know, I, know, I know we've got a long, long way to go. But well, I, I mean, there's, there's 7 to 1 on to qualify from a group that contains San Marino, Moldova, um, yeah, Ukraine are in there as well, and Poland. So I think they should win their home games, they should go through. Mm. I, I think they'll be there, they'll, they'll take part in this tournament. But I think it'll be a very, very different England I mean, you, team you, that takes to the field in that first game. And if not much has changed in terms of um, expectation and, and, and ability in that time, I just can't see how they're going to manage to win something that now contains 
Brazil and Argentina on top of oh, that. That's true. Th Theo Walcott says that we're peaking for the next World Cup. <laughs> well, we, so I'm, I'm very, assu have. very assured by that. No? Uh, no, no. Well, he's so been I've peaking so for about six years. He right? has, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> the team that for me standing in this list are Uruguay at 20 well, to 1. I was going to say. get a lot yeah, bigger yeah. than that. And I say the other team is on the Copper, Ameri Copper, Copper America winners at 20 to 1 and beaten Copper America teams at 3 and a half. Semi finalists in 2010, Copper America winners last year. They've started the World Cup qualifiers very, very well. I think they're 100%. Them, for me, are the standout price. I think, I think our traders are being one. quite shoot, shrewd actually yeah. in keeping them short. Um, I think we're one of the shortest prices Uruguay, so it's not, yeah. it's not the place to back them uh, if you are. Al, um, let's just talk a little bit more England, and we talked about this at the top of the show with the other two boys, but give me your view of the England team and where it's at, and how disappointed were you with them last night? Well, I think we've mentioned the media already regarding the actual patriotic money that goes on England before a tournament and whether the expectation was hyped up or not, but... If Fabio Capello had been sitting in that dugout last night, I think we'd be reading some pretty shocking headlines and ones that probably would have outranked those that Graham Taylor got when he mm. came back from Sweden in 92. Mm. Um, I, th I think that that would have been exactly the case. I don't really think that Fabio Capello would have done much different to Roy Hodgson. He just seems to be the, the charming, lovable figure that the media have somehow attached to and said, well, we quite like... Uncle Roy, and we're not going to go down this route of, of rubbish in the team. So um, what we're getting now is, I mean, uh, Radio so 5 phone-ins have probably... So been given a pass for this tournament yeah. kind of thing, hasn't it? Well, it's absolutely. Like, but it's like it's been really bad, so let's lay off them yeah. for a bit or something. You listen to the phone-ins and you, you've, you've got people saying, oh, this is the best camp that we've ever had, this is the best spirit in the camp mm. we've ever had. Well, who cares? Yeah, we, but also, <laughs> we, you know, we, we were unbeaten anything? up until that point, you mm. know. Of course they were you, you can only describe what's actually going on at the time. Who, who's to say if we'd been beaten 2-0 by France, there wouldn't have been an absolute uproar? The disappointing thing for me is the expectations game, where you've got Trevor Brooking, who's you know <clears throat> supposed to be overall in charge of the England, England squad and everything, saying that everything on top of getting out the boat... Uh, out of the group was a bonus. Mm. And you sort of you look at the group and you think, well, you are well, supposed to get out of that group. I mean, the, the thing is, sorry, well, one, one thing is with this is that basically, if, if Chelsea never won the Champions League, we would be sitting here saying it's the worst force I can ever remember at all. Because Chelsea actually won the biggest competition in Europe playing exactly the same style, we were led into a belief that's the only way we could play. Mm. And the players went in there saying the only way you can win this or do win this competition is the Chelsea way. Mm. That's how we oh, won. And how many times did we hear the word Chelsea? Is, yeah, over, but over the if Chelsea week. got done over against Barcelona, we wouldn't have played this way. We'd have been a bit more adventurous. But and I mean, of course, of course, that's how Roy Hodgson has managed and set up teams throughout yeah, his I career. So that Fulham. kind of played into. His I saw hands, him right? play, uh, manager at Fulham. I used to go to Fulham every, every week, and we never played as bad defensively as that Fulham. They played with two wingers, they played with 4-4-2, two, two up front, big man up front, but they weren't like that. Mm. The, the main what? problem is, is that, is that <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, the media shaped the views of 80% of the people in this country, and everyone's waking up this morning saying we were unlucky, when really the performance didn't deem that at all. It was mm. exactly what they deserved, so the luck, the luck played out and, and, and they were beaten on penalties, but they, they should have been they should have been beaten in the last 20 minutes of the game. I think, it, I think it was a par performance, to be honest with you. I, I, what you've got to understand is England, for me, is just a, 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 a good team and nothing more than that. Everyone was saying before the tournament started that the, the value lay in them getting knocked out in the group stages. They won the group. I wasn't, Chris, I promise. Yeah, I you know, you were not uh, like, Most of the people I spoke to were on. Mm. And, and they won the group quite well, seven points out of nine, and lost on penalties um, to Italy. If I was an England fan, seeing what they've got in the resources, um, I would be, you know, just I wouldn't be angry. Put it that way. But I just, I just don't buy it. I think you're talking about you're talking about the country in Europe, second only to Germany, with the most participation in football yeah. mm. in yeah. Europe. You're talking about the richest league in the yeah. world. And that's the national team. But Personally, club, I don't think it's club good enough. football's taken over England. The national team doesn't it? Yeah, but you've got, you've got what, four or five Champions League winners in that starting eleven. I mean, I, I just don't understand why you should, ex, you know, why you should accept that kind of performance. I think, yeah, but how many of them play in a creative role for their team that actually offensively win matches? Um, I think the ones that actually had won the Champions League within that squad last night, mm. um, and even if you go back in the past, maybe only Gerrard playing towards the front. Mm. Um, well, I'm, I'm not a Hodgson fan, so I'll stay out of it. I'm biased because I'm a Liverpool fan and I, I saw, saw the evil of his works. Um, <laughs> so I'll let you guys talk about Hodgson. And we've got some fun Hodgson bets that you can have. Uh, there are some specials if you want to bet. You can't bet ne next England manager for at least another couple of years. You, you um, say about Hodgson, what, what, what would Harry have done differently? If Harry was in charge, what would he have done differently? Wouldn't he, we, 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 we I don't think a Harry Redknapp team would have sat off 
Right, that Italian midfield like that. What quality of players you've got, and the quality of players we've got just simply aren't good enough. I, I think but they, they could have changed this. But Hodgson, Hodgson is what he is. He, he, he makes it hard to beat. But you know, we've got some players to come back. Not the greatest of shakes, but I think he'll be. Well, if you, if you time. want to bet on Roy Hodgson's future, you can bet on him on when he leaves uh, during the World Cup qualifiers. Is eight to one. Leaving after the World Cup, after the World Cup finals, but before the Euro 2016 qualifiers, is the four to one shortest price right there. So uh, the odds on various to him to see how his contract. He he, like. he will he will last a long time as England manager because they can't afford to get anybody else in. The mm. appointments are very and and the thing is he's. I don't think he's going to have many skeletons in his closet that someone's going to find out. You know, you know. No. I don't think he's going to be a front page exclusive I mean, the, about the Harry. The biggest danger uh, is that someone plays tapes of his previous game. Yeah, that's <laughs> I, mean, I, think, I think I think he's going to be a long time. I think he's, he's and I think they're going to buy him for a long time. And I think, however much you, you criticise him, he knows European football. And I think Alan said he about he's held himself with dignity in his competition. He speaks lang- many languages. He is, a, he is a somebody who, who the FA will like. Do you know and what, right? a long time. I, and, I, and I know this from following journalists on Twitter. And it, it's, it's very strange. They're only human, these journalists. And mm. quite often you will read a journalist on Twitter who might have just arrived at Arsenal's training ground, say, and tweet something like, and I'm not kidding, oh, that was a lovely bit of cake in the canteen. No, it's like true. And, and their, and their right. mood just seems to have gone mm. through. And then, oh, I, I spoke to Theo Walker. I had a fantastic interview with him. What a, what a wonderful season he's having. And it all seems to be based on their mood, and they'll translate that to their piece. And it won't have anything to do with the way that that person has played or has played in the, you know, the last few weeks. And suddenly, we've been given this as the England manager as well, being told that it's OK because his personality is OK, mm. and we get on with him, and we like the fact that he stopped to talk to us, and we like the fact that the players stopped to talk to us, and when they were walking around, they stopped to talk to us, and that's enough for us as the media. Yeah. Um, we'll ignore the fact that they played appallingly. And, obviously, and if it was a, Fabio you have Capello, a beer with, have you have a beer with the manager. You couldn't have a beer yeah. with Fabio Capello, whatever. Chris, um, you're you're very down on the England team. We're just going to complete those odds by showing yeah. um, if you think he's going to last a little bit longer. Um, the, the shortest price is after Euro 2016 and before mm, World Cup 2018. I'm, quite I'm, a long range bet. Yeah, not for me. Yeah. <laughs> if you, I don't think they. You want to wait five years? I don't years think the media. Collect. I think these honeymoon periods is over now. I think the media might kick in like they probably want to really. They all wanted Harry Redknapp and I think they've just thought, like, let's just give him a chance to year 2012. Now I, I think if he gets off to a bad start in this World Cup qualifying campaign, they'll dig in here I think. And I, I, I wouldn't be too surprised if, if the style of play is horrible, the results are horrible, he might go during this World well, that, Cup qualifying. That Ukraine, hunt, I mean, World Cup ama- amazingly England's next game in about 50 days time is against Italy. Italy yeah is against Italy, a friendly in, in Switzerland, one of those mm. ones that the FA got tied into because of the, the deals um, for playing friendlies abroad. So it's right. one that nobody wants to play, and I bet they're all dreading it now. But mm. he's got, he then plays Moldova away, should win that game, shouldn't be a problem. But Ukraine at home at Wembley, um, I think that that could be key to the way, as Chris says, his profile progresses in the media. and. and I, I think that that's a key game for him, and then obviously Poland's a difficult game away. Um, yeah, he could be, he could be in, for, he could be in for some stick. And then amazingly, I think we play Scotland in. Uh, yeah, <laughs> watch out, watch out. <laughs> in, 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 all, about. in August 2013, we play Scotland. So he's got a few difficult games in and in and around there, it's and ones one where he's going to have to actually perform. We'll just yeah. finish with you, Nigel, because I think you're a little bit more optimistic about England's future, aren't you? You can see good players coming through. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I coach kids. At, at, I've done level one coach in the FA coaches, but they're, they're making pitches smaller. They're making football uh, more about skill and about height. I mean, we've got kids I, I coach who are little guys who have got very good technique, and it's basically smaller pitches. They're making under seven, under eight football five aside now. Smaller goals. Um, they're making and boys who go from up to under ten, under eleven. Now used to go to eleven aside football. It's now under nine. So nine aside football. So uh, I mean, I see some boys coming through. There's a boy who plays with me called uh, what is it, a nine year old called. Uh, Louis Heyman, who's on, going to be on the books of a few big clubs, they're, they're all technically good players. Mm. They're all very, very good players. But they're, um, I think, they're, the, the money the FA invested in this new setup. I can Do you not think it's attitude though? Because uh, I mean, you know, we, we spoke about this before we came on air. But I saw Ashley Cole and, and Ashley Young place the ball yesterday and, uh, for their penalties, and they just, they just looked as if they just weren't. Okay, well, we, unfortunately, we run out of power. We're going to have to finish <laughs> on. We're going to have to finish on that thought. Um, but. Uh, According to Nigel, you just have to wait. Might be a very long yeah, we'll time. All the good players are currently nine. <laughs> uh, you might have to wait a little while for England's success. We'll get there eventually. After the break, we're going to be talking tennis. The greatest tennis tournament in the world has just started in Wimbledon, so don't go anywhere.
Welcome back. You're watching the Euro 2012 betting zone here on Sports Tonight. And we're going to talk a little bit of tennis. Wimbledon starts. Uh, summer has arrived, allegedly. Let's hope it makes summer arrive. That'd be nice. Uh, as ever, there'll be the annual Andy Murray frenzy and the annual quarter slash semi-final disappointment, I'm sure. But we're interested in the betting point of view and finding some value for you. So uh, we'll start with our bookie, or one of them. Uh, Al, how big is this from a betting point of view? How, how much does Wimbledon take as a market? Well, tennis is, tennis is a huge sport for us, and um, I mean, throughout the actual season, you know, it's not just two weeks uh, in South West London, but throughout the, the whole season, um, a lot of our European customers love betting on the tennis, mm. and um, you know, we, we, we have a full service for all the games and all the tours. When it comes to Wimbledon, yes, the outright market suddenly gets a, a, a boost of all, this, of all this money where people, once a year punters, are saying, right, I'll have my each way bet or win bet for, for Wimbledon, mainly on the men's, and now that it's a bit of a closed shop at the top, they're not really getting the, you know, the, the outsider at 20 to 1, 16 to 1 that they, they were getting in the past that they fancied. I think, I think when you, whenever you look at a major tennis tournament now, on the men's side, maybe only three people can win it, and mm. uh, Chris is probably going to say four, but uh, I totally <laughs> disagree with that. I know you do. Huh? Chris, <laughs> just refresh my memory. Is he Scottish or British? Because I can never remember. Uh, always Scott. 100 percent Scottish. 100 percent Scottish. Except for when he wins, so then keep he's away. British. Keep away next Sunday All right. when he's left in the trophy. Really? Stay away. Really? You're uh, confident? I went. I went too far there, didn't I? <laughs> you I did a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, well, we'll talk about Andy Murray in a second, yeah. but. Is tennis one of those sports where punters can still find an edge, or is it now a little bit more exposed and the um, bookies are kind of all over it? Oh, well, it's probably the second biggest sport, isn't it, Alan? In terms of, yeah. uh, uh, I think football and tennis. When in my previous place I used to work, were the only two sports that, that converted through every domain, every territory, mm. like tennis and and, and football and. Um, I think I think it's hard now to find an edge because it's the traders are totally on the ball. Yeah, and just to give us a spin into Wimbledon, then we've got the obviously the big three of men's tennis. Well, it's kind of the big <laughs> two now, isn't it? Sort of. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's hard to believe Djokovic was world number four just two years ago. Mm. He's really came up here the last couple of years, but he's I now thirteen to eight favourite. The bet for me is probably is the Nadal. I think the gap is the two thousand and eleven gap. I think it's closing. Um, and you know we we, we saw that in the in the it was absolutely amazing the French Open. That's probably his best ever win, his most comfortable win this year. No doubt at Roland Garros, absolutely amazing. Um, I, I just think. I'd have them a bit tighter on the bet in between the two, and I think the Dow's in shout here. Yeah, Djokovic already through today, uh, six three, six three, six one, and um, I, th I think they were actually trying to criticise him on the TV. I mean, you can't really criticise a oh, straight six <laughs> victory like that against uh, uh, Ferrero. But um, he's supposed to peak they, in fortnight, they, isn't he? I well, mean, they they were saying that he he hadn't he wasn't mixing his serves up. I mean, I, I was only watching. I'm not the biggest sort of tennis expert but they were saying that he wasn't mixing his serves up and uh, he, he was serving to the outside quite a bit. It's probably but half I asleep think it though. Was probably, he? yeah, I mean he, he wasn't really facing the challenge. Ferrero, it, it's probably his last ever um, Wimbledon and he didn't put up much of a fight and Djokovic mm. just nicely eased himself into the tournament as champion, uh, as reigning champion with, with, with a straight sets victory. Mm. But um, Nadal, I think after that French Open win and the way that that, act that tournament actually played itself out, I think he might think he has the upper hand and obviously they're separated by the draw and they could well meet in the final and I think that that probably will be the final. Yeah. Nigel, where do you find an edge now? I know that you're uh, very, very into the tennis market. I've trained tennis for 15 years. You did. I've done it for Stan James who was the very first bookmaker who ever did tennis in running. First firm of Darcy, do 64 matches at Wimbledon and they have any incident, no head-to-head -head record and the ones you laid the first three bets and you knew you got it wrong. As simple as that, you know, and, and, and then you had to just take him off. We were the first ones up. I mean, so I, I honestly think I look at the draw. The draw is the most important thing in this tournament. Andy Murray's yeah. got the hardest draw you could possibly imagine. He's got some dangerous, massively dangerous flows. He's got Karlovic, six foot ten guy in the second round. He's got the young kid coming through, Raonic from uh, Croatia, who's got the best first serve percentage in the tour this season. Absolutely unbelievable. He hasn't got it mentally yet. He's a bit like Gordon Ivanovic at a young age. He's got all the game for a grass court player, he's a but he's, he's a nutcase. So we're back in when he comes back in like 20 yeah, years. Yeah, but he's got him well short. They've got him well short. If you Murray, were, Murray's ten to one to win the tournament. Just he's got no chance. He's got no chance. He's got no chance. He's got some, he's got he's, some he's, chance. He's, he, what, you know, he has. What's he has. His he has I think if you worked out his price going through match by match to match to match, I've got a computer system that runs all that. It comes out about twenty-five to one shot. But he's um, he, he's the trouble with him. He 
he, he gets to the quarterfinals and everything, then he's, he gets, he's against players of an equal will. And he, okay. he's surrounding himself well, by three of the best the players. Let's have, a quick, let's have a quick look at the Andy Murray bets. This is uh, the price he is to go through each round. Like you're kind of the price is illustrating the, 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 the way that the men's singles tournament is top heavy because mm. the prices get shorter, 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 shorter. And you're thinking, well, if he's two to one to get to the, se if he's two to one yeah. to be knocked out in the semi, then he's obviously got a good chance of lasting the whole way. But mm. then it drifts yeah. right out to ten to one because you know exactly who he's going to be playing okay. when he gets there. So the percentage-wise, you know, it does look as if he's going to get to the last eight. I'll get some uh, individual tips from you on the tournament in a second. I just want to cover off the women's because uh, they are taking part as well, and then it's actually perhaps a little bit more open than the men's. There's a, there's a couple here I quite like on the betting. I like uh, Mario Bartoli. He's got a very easy fourth quarter. She's in the quarter with Azarenko, who can't possibly win this tournament. She's Azarenko, a clay, eight to one. She's a clay court talent spire through and through. She's world number one. Started off the season superbly. Gone off the ball massively. Uh, Bartoli will be a big, big price. And she, I think she's a bet to win that quarter at four to one. I bet to win that quarter at four. Sarah Pover's obviously, she, she's got the game for grass. She's got the serve. She's come on the back of a French Open winner. And one thing she is, she's the most mentally strong sportswoman in the world by mm. none. She, you know, if she's if she's three, five one down, she'll mm. still win with a chance. She won't give up a point. Serena Williams can't have at all. Her sister's been battered today. I think the Williams era is totally gone. And I think Lena Clay Court, Clarissa's Clay Court, Kivitova has got the game to win it. But I think you, I think you can get a shot winner here. I think you look at people outside. Shot. I, I, I think uh, Bartoli got to the set final win within about four years ago. Got beat by Serena Williams. And around a 50 to 1, especially to win a quarter of fours. That fourth quarter is very, very weak. Nice bit of value. Chris, um, anything that takes your interest in the women's or the men's draw? Uh, to, to, the women's, to be honest, it's just something that doesn't really get me passionate at all. I think back to Sabatini and Graf era, it was fantastic when I was a kid, but no at the moment. I suppose Sharapova Sharapo winning at Roland Garros, that'll give her a lot of, a lot of confidence. I think she's won at Wimbledon since 2004. Uh, the men's, I've been worried, I think he's got uh, Kilic in the quarterfinals. He won at Queen's. Playing really well, then that could be troublesome. So maybe Marin Kelic to, to, to win his quarter. I, I don't know. That, that's, that's how you can't bet moment. against Murray, though. I don't you can, know, can I recommend don't. it. I'll let you do that. But you can't physically bet against. I would never. I would never. An act, would of, never. An act of sedition. I, would, I, I, I don't think you'll make that far, Murray. I, really, I, I you think actually think he's going to bomb out. He plays Karlovic and he plays the guy called Dimitrov, who had terrible cramps at Queens. Who's probably mm. the best young. He won junior Wimbledon. He's a proper, proper talent. Well, so is Murray. No, no, but he plays Ryan. I mean this. I don't think Murray's Murray. won a game. Al's split the difference, was split the the difference on this. If you had to, I'd sorry, I'm just going to commit Al on Andy Murray. Where, 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 where um, well, you, where as Chris knows, I, I despise Andy Murray. And he's, <laughs> one of the, he's, one of, he's one of the biggest Murray fans, so it's probably one, one of the only things we, we passionately <laughs> disagree on. But um, I'm not the biggest Murray fan. I, I think he is obviously a very, very good tennis player. But I just don't think he's ever going to go above the line okay. uh, of where his peak performance actually we're, exists. We're and running out of show, so just give me your pick to win the men's. Not original, I think Djokovic will win it. Nadal. Djokovic, Nadal. 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 Two to one, Nadal, Djokovic. I'll take uh, Djokovic, there you go. You just bet them in the forecast for the, for the <laughs> final, it's easy, right? They're guaranteed to be one too. Uh, that's all we've got for you on the betting zone today. A big, big thank you to my experts, to the betting butler, to Chris Graham and Alan Algar from Blue Square. Continue to enjoy Euro 2012 and Wimbledon. I hope all your bets are winners and we've helped you out a little bit. There'll be more betting at 7 o'clock tomorrow night on Sports Tonight. Good luck with your punting. I mean, my general thought, Nigel, is the football's just been outstanding. It has been. I mean, it has been a, probably the... Everyone expected it to be a terrible tournament in front of the football, as far as the stadiums, as far as the, the, the countries hosting it. But it's been absolutely amazing. But mm. as far as... Well, I'm, I'm a massive Finland fan. I was so disappointed last night. And there's a part of me that the tournament died last night. And I think there's a part of punters as well. I mean, there are your professional gamblers out there who like betting on the football. And, the, and what we're going to see, two absolute belters of the semi-finals. But as soon mm. as England go out of a competition... I'd say about 50% of the betting public sort of say, that's it, we'll move on to something so else. So people will be interested to know, how's that reflected in the numbers on, on the books? Does it, does it diminish the amount that you well, have I at think stake what on each I match? think what happens when you get to these kind of stages, there's not many much um, error in the prices. And your 10, 20, 30 pound recreational punter comes out and goes back to betting first goal score or quick score. Yeah. Your more serious punter comes out to play, you know, mm. your, your big, big punters. So the figures are probably about the same. But 
the number of people betting will be a lot, lot less. Yeah. And I think, I, I think you know, the guys in the betting shops, I mean, you, you, you do a straw poll on the streets now, everyone will be deflated. I think that we consider the people betting. I mean, and the, the way England played yesterday was just such an inept performance. I, th I, you know, I was looking forward to the game more than any game I've ever looked forward to. It's mm. about 1996. And the way they let everyone down, I mean, just, just appalled. Same to your point with, with how the tournament's gone. I mean, I haven't had a bet because I would have absolutely done my brains. Yeah. If I, you know, I, would have been, I would have been out of the game going into that game last night. I would have sold goals in most of all the games. I would have absolutely done my absolute... It has, it has been weird, hasn't it? It's been more attacking and open than people thought, I think. Let's um, take breath and check out how the tournament is. More on England later on. We're going to talk uh, England's future, a little bit about Hodgson, stuff like that coming later in the show. So do stick with us. But we're going to look at the tournament as it stands right now, after the quarterfinals, as I said, time to take breath and see where we are. Four teams left, of course, as we enter the semis uh, this week, and two outstanding teams, but two live outsiders, so it'd be interesting to see what money they attract. Spain are the favourites just from Germany, uh, Portugal and Italy, the other two teams involved. It's, that's, that's our specific, our sponsors list, but I, actually I, I looked at all the different bookmakers and what the prices are, and, and, and the, most fa the most common prices is, is joint favouritism. Yeah. Uh, and Germany, in fact, are, are favourites above Spain and, and, and most lists. So Spain favourite is actually the least common uh, three uh, combinations there, so that, that's really interesting. For me, I think Germany should be favourites. Um, I, 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 I really want to get, get Spain here. I backed them not to qualify from their group. I'm determined to get them beat. Um, I think it might come. Why? Why do you think that? Because, I, I mean, you're talking about the World Cup winners who barely let... I, mean, I feel that the British public, the betting public, probably, um, you know, however great these semi-finals are, I, don't think, I think the turnover will be massively reduced because England aren't there. Yeah, so, I think it was a huge night last night, especially because it was a Sunday night. I think the viewing figures were over the 20 million mark, which is extraordinary. extraordinary. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing stuff. But I think the bookmakers, the industry generally is upset because mm. I, think we're, I think we were expecting about 15 million to be staked last night, but that was perhaps even got to be doubled or, or another well, five. Well, if England Germany would have been Thursday night would have been extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So in that respect, yeah. it's a real and shame. And it's my birthday Thursday night. Oh, and I was going to oh, barbecue oh, plan with all the boys oh, around oh, the now. We've got to watch Italy and Germany. Have a barbecue. Oh, oh, can't oh, it's off. Really? It's off the barbecue. Oh, 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 no, Nigel's withdrawn his buns. Um, <laughs> and uh, how are you both getting on in terms of your own punning? Me? Um, I started well, uh, fell off the pace. And then came a late rattle last night, my most successful night punting last night, 0-0 no, no, and penalties. So I feel like last night was kind of one of those nights where it just went exactly how you would have assessed it would yeah. have gone. I think like the sort of astute punter probably did all right last night. Yeah, you, I mean, the thing is, I mean, I know, I know you did very well on the under two and a half goal market, you know, and a lot of people would have played that market. But, you know, that price, that market is usually around about five to six, four to five. You've got to take two on for that game. Now, mm. I know in hindsight, you look at, oh, it's never going to be a goal. But if one of them got chances goes in in the first two minutes. Oh, the first five minutes is horrible. Yeah, you would have been absolutely <laughs> totally like different The most game. stretched attacking but game you, You've had to go very short. I mean, you, yeah. anyone taking two on or two to five, I'm, the shortest I can remember a game to, under two exactly. and a half goals is around about four to nine. Mm. And, and to take yeah. those kind of prices, anyone will tell you, you know, someone like Channing, who's more professional, look at say, you, you can't statistically win by backing those short mm. prices. But on that game, you got it right, you it called it right, right you know, it, it was right. And, but how low could you go under two? How low could you go? Yeah, that was, that was, yeah. You know, that was, that was really yeah. close. And probably, you know, probably I'm taking a little bit of the worst of it there over time. But mm. I, it was just that specific game with those teams. Yeah, I mean, you, look, you look at the penalties. I mean, the penalties in that game, the game what, what price did you take the match to go to penalties on? Uh, 92. I've got 92. 92. I mean, you're looking at other games in a tournament, it's like 16 to 1, 14 <laughs> to 1. So you, you know, you're taking a lot, lot lower under the odds on that particular mm. game to go to penalties. You know, everyone's got it right. So actually the bookies probably were a little bit, you're saying, a little bit unlucky that it actually went to form. I think, I think what happened last night, I mean, just reading through the tweets of some of the PROs in the, in, in the bookmaking industry, they kept the draw so short that it put people off and the patriotic money, count, the patriotic pound took time to come, but mm. it, it came with a vengeance last night and it was a perfect result. And I think sometimes the nil-nils and, and of this world are great for more of your shrewder yeah. client, but... The shrewd client is probably 5% of your, of, of your database, and if 95% mm -hmm. are mapping something, it's a per perfect result. So, yeah. but it, uh
Welcome to the Sports Tonight Euro 2012 betting zone. We're going to find the value in Euro 2012 for you, and I do feel a little bit like I'm impinging on private grief. I know England went out last night, and it's not a happy time. But the great thing about punting is that there's always a way back. There's always a way to feel good about a tournament, whether your team wins or not. So we're going to try and find whatever value is left for you. To do that, I'm delighted to be joined by Nigel Seeley, the betting butler, and Chris Graham. Nigel and Chris, lovely to have you. Nick, how you doing? Yeah, really good. Really enjoying the tournament, apart from the l result last night, of course. It's been uh, fabulous, isn't you're it? You're probably still loving it as a Scot. Yeah, no, I, I, would, I, I, didn't notice, I had a sensible, different my attitude towards England's exit last night. I was, it was a wee bit of it, it was, it was, it was quite sad, actually. Uh, just being, being in London um, and just being amongst the, the crew here and the, the people here, it's been, it's been a great experience. And I, I would hate to see that quelled after last night's elimination. No, I think that the semi-finals are so exciting that people are still going to... Great games and yeah. some great teams, and 